Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So welcome to you today as we come together on the 13th of June and as we come to the second Sunday of Trinity and we join together around bread and wine. If you're joining this at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, then you're joining together with the people of Fiskerton who will be worshipping in uh, almost the same service as I share with you now. So as we think of the broader church, uh, not just us at home, but all those people who are worshipping on this Sunday, let's place ourselves in that whole cloud of witnesses. And so we come together in words of preparation in this service, a prayer we say together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Well, Jesus summed up the law of Moses, given to Moses to give to the people of Israel in the desert, and he summed them up in two uh, commandments. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbour. And sometimes we don't do those things in the way that God would have us do. So just let's reflect for a few moments, shall we? on the times when perhaps we have failed to do those two things. And then I'll begin to lead us in a time of confession. And we know that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly res resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all, as we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. A prayer of forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in the light of receiving God's forgiveness, we come to get together to say some words of praise. Those words of praise are known as the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And always when we gather together, we say together, or we, we pray a collect, and a collect is a prayer that pulls together, together the theme of the day's service. And today it's about faith. Shall we pray? Faithful Creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we come to um, our Bible readings for the day, the first of which is taken from the Old Testament and the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a prophet and prophets were called sometimes to say some quite unpopular things and to kind of forth tell of the words of God. And so this is from Ezekiel chapter 17 and beginning at verse 22. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will take a shoot from the very top of a cedar and plant it. I will break off a tender sprig from its topmost shoots and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It will produce branches and bear fruit and become a splendid cedar. Birds of every kind will nest in it. They will find shelter in the shade of its branches. All the trees of the forest will know that I, the Lord, bring down the tall tree and make the low tree grow tall. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our Gospel reading this morning, we read from Mark chapter 4, and we hear two short parables of Jesus. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to them, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise and night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all seeds of it on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for the words of Jesus. We thank you for the way that you spoke through Ezekiel. And Lord, we pray that you would speak to us today. Speak to us of things unseen. We ask this in your name. Amen. Every year, quite frankly, I'm amazed at my garden. I'm amazed at it largely because I do almost nothing to it and yet appears every year new growth, colour, a lot of green, some nettles, some weeds. In the autumn the leaves fall, things die back, we emerge from winter, the snowdrops and the aconites appear on the bank, I breathe a sigh of relief and I know that spring is coming. Most weeks in the creed we say these words, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. Jesus said in one of today's two parables, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground 
and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself. It is a principle of God, of creation, of nature and of life that there is an unseen world. A world where you don't see the chicken growing in the shell or what happens under the surface of the ground when a seed is sown. A world where life is not limited to what we see because for every outward appearance there is a deeper inner reality. Too often, human seeing is outwardly focused and appearance-based. It is evidence-based. God seeing, however, is in inwardly focused and heart-based. And what you see, what you get is, and what you see is what you get. Way of living is too limited, and it cannot reveal the fullness of God's life and presence among us. It offers no hope for reconciliation and forgiveness and healing and transformation. God always invites us, though, into a deeper seeing. And that's what Jesus' parables are all about. They are the lens that aligns human seeing with God's seeing. They give us a glimpse into God's kingdom, even as we look at the things of this world. Parables ask us to see in a different way. They rarely give answers. They often ask questions. Parables ask us to let go of what you see is what you get kind of world and trust that what we see is not all there is. There is always something more going on than what we see. And that something more is the kingdom of God a kingdom that is already planted in creation. God is always at work in our lives, like a seed scattered upon the earth. As a seed does, not, uh, as a, as a seed does its thing, so the kingdom does its kingdom thing. We may not understand it. Outward appearances may even suggest God is absent. It may look like nothing is happening, we sleep and we rise, we wait, we trust, we hope, we pray. We go about the ordinary work of life. And within that ordinariness, the life of God has already been planted in each one of us. One day it sprouts, it grows, the invisible becomes visible. The full harvest was always there, hidden in the seeds. It may have been invisible, but importantly, it was never absent. The thing is that believing in the unseen requires faith. And to believe in what you cannot see is sometimes a very difficult thing. F.C. Grant says this about faith. Faith means believing beyond the range of evidence, not in spite of the evidence, beyond it. Faith means the discovery of further evidence, higher in kind and of sub subtler validity. Faith means trust, adventure, self-committal, and its evidences are on the things not seen. Faith. My college principal said that it was like a muscle. It needs exercising. We need to move to the edge of a comfort zone and then trust that God will hold us when we step off the edge. I was reminded of an exercise in faith when I read those words from the book of Ezekiel. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it, he says. It will produce branches and bear fruit and become a splendid cedar. Birds of every kind will nest in it. They will find shelter in the shade of its branches. A personal story. Well, in 1999, I left teaching. It was a job that mostly I loved and I had taught in the same place for a long time, for 19 years, in fact. And I kind of felt I'd grown up at the, uh, the place in which I worked. And I learned a lot from the people in that place, from students and staff. And it was very much a place and a people that nurtured me. 
At the turn of 1999, though, I knew it was time to go. It was a step of faith to announce that. In fact, not just a step, but a pretty large leap for me. I knew that God was calling me out and on, but I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't have a job to go to. I didn't know where I'd be working or what I was doing or what was coming. I had to exercise the muscle of faith. It was quite interesting to experience other people's response to that when they knew that I was going and had nothing else to move on to. Largely, they thought I was mad. All the outward appearance pointed to having a great job and having security, but faith was saying something else to me. Leaving that place was very difficult and then there came the day of the leaving speech. I was quite frankly a mess that day. At this point there was no way back or out and I had to stand up in front of 80 staff and thank them and I had not a clue what to say to them until God gave me an image. It was simply a picture of a bird in a tree. A bird that had been hatched in a nest in the tree. A bird that had been fed there, nurtured, protected. And now it was time to fly. It was time for it to do that which it was created to do. But the tricky bit was stepping off the branch and testing that the wings would work. And for me, I had to learn that God would be there, not only to be the parent that had already given me the nudge up the backside to get me to the edge of the nest or the edge of the branch, but also the one who would fly under me to, me, to, ensure, to ensure that when the moment came to step off the edge of what felt like a precipice, I would not fall to the ground. And out of that came a sort of a parable come leaving speech that testified to God in my life, thanked those who had nurtured me. And from that moment, I knew that the muscle of faith had been exercised once more. God was real and would see me through. The change in my demeanour within the course of probably two hours was quite remarkable. From feeling a complete mess, I felt excited about what was coming. God was real and would see me through. Well, he has. But it's not always actually about the big moments, is it? It's so often about the day in, day out, can't see what God is doing. Nothing's happening. Circumstances are suggesting that God isn't even around. It's those moments that test our faith so often. But faith says to us in all those circumstances that God is very much there. We believe in all that is seen and unseen. The thing is that faith comes in seasons too. Our relationship with God comes in seasons and God, I think, moves in seasons also. Sometimes it's winter. Sometimes we feel an absence, yet we know that God is present, but we can't see what's happening among us. But the truth is that spring always comes and it takes faith to believe that. It takes faith in the realm that we cannot see to believe it. And so to exercise the muscle of faith, an important thing, but so often a difficult thing. And perhaps it's something that we should talk about more often as we proceed and as we move in our relationship with God. Shall we pray? Faith, a belief in that which is unseen. Lord, sometimes we doubt you. Sometimes we don't see you working. Just help us to look with eyes and hearts of faith on the circumstances that surround us and to ask you what you're doing among us. 
Lord, we give you thanks for the green shoots of faith. We thank you for the flourishing trees. And we thank you, Lord, that when we experience winter, spring comes. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we affirm our faith together? And we'll use those words that I have just spoken of. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Shall we pray? And so let us pray to God the Father who has reconciled all things to himself in Christ. We pray today for peace among the nations, that God may rid the world of violence and let peoples grow in justice and harmony. We pray, Lord, for our own relationships with the European Union, going through testing times. We pray, Lord, for a meeting of minds and a meeting of wills. We pray that as negotiations happen, things will work out for the common good. But Lord, we know there are many situations in the world where there is darkness, where there is violence. We pray for the people of Syria, for the people of Afghanistan. We pray for an uneasy, or we pray for the uneasy peace between Palestinian and Israeli. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who serve in public office, that they may work for the common good. We pray for G7 leaders as they bring to a conclusion the gatherings over this last few days in Cornwall. We pray, Lord, for continued good relationships, for a determination to work for all peoples, for a true sense of collegiality, of unity and support one of another. We pray for integrity and for wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray for Christian people everywhere, that we may joyfully proclaim and live our faith in Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that in all situations we may honour you. We pray that we may love you as we are called to do and to love our neighbour. We pray for all those Christians who are working in matters of social justice, those who are working on behalf of the homeless, those who work with those who are trafficked across the world. We pray for those who seek justice for carers, for those who seek justice in the courts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who suffer from hunger, from sickness or loneliness, for those struggling with mental health difficulties and crises. We pray that the presence of Christ may bring them health and wholeness. And in a few moments of silence, shall we offer to God those known to us in need of prayer. And we remember too all those who are bereaved at this time. Lord, may you be their peace, their healing and their strength. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. so we come to share the peace one with another and so if you want to um, put something on the screen or maybe text someone or whoever just bring someone to mind as we share the peace together we are the body of Christ in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body let us do all that makes for peace and builds up our common life the peace of the Lord be always with you So we come to bread and wine. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into the covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of the coming of your kingdom on earth, where we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are the most holy one enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Amen. Lord, we believe. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed the way of salvation. 
loving us to the end. He gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise with and reign with him in glory. Amen. Lord, we believe. For on the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. Therefore we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. We pray together. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. body of Christ keep us in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep us in eternal life. Amen.
speak to the heat of my desire. Your coolness and your balm that sends me down the pressure time. Speak to the earthquake, wind and fire. Shall we pray? Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who live his risen life bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thank you once again for joining me on this Sunday morning. And uh, just a heads up about the rest of today, which is that at four o'clock we'll be doing Messy Church in Church at Reefham. Um, and then at seven o'clock this evening we'll be Compline, and then at 7.30 again tomorrow morning. I'll be joining you for morning prayer. So take care, everyone, and a final prayer of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and everyone you love and everyone you pray for this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.